it's Crystal, your very own personal beauty bro. I actually am a professional makeup artist. And along the way, I've also become a licensed esthetician and hairstylist because I just have such a passion and interest for all things beauty. My primary work is in what's called advertising or commercial work. I also do editorial, which is the type of work you would see in magazines, along with a runway like New York Fashion Week. In addition to doing what I love, I absolutely love sharing my professional tips, tricks, and secrets. I'm also a girly girl that just loves beauty products. So today I'm going to share a brand with you that I've been playing with a bit and that is Shantikai. Now I've known about Shantikai for quite some time, although recently they've been gaining more and more popularity and visibility in the social media space and they've been kind of working on becoming more inclusive slowly but surely. I initially became aware of Shantikai a few years ago because of their skincare. Shantikai is a botanical based skincare and cosmetic company. Their focus really is on botanicals and the power of nature and harnessing that with science. They also have a philanthropic heart, so they do support various conservation efforts. A little while back, I picked up some items from Chantakai to kind of explore the brand and see what they were doing. There are still so many things I want to try from the brand, especially their skincare. I want to see how effective it really is, but we'll start with the things I have. So this first item up is the Detox Clay Mask with Rosemary and Honey. This is what at first seems to be perhaps your run-of-the-mill clay mask. But I must say I was rather impressed with this mask performance. One of the primary ingredients is kaolin, which is a clay, and that is known for drawing out toxins from the skin. However, the thing that's unique about this mask is because of the other ingredients, this mask doesn't dry to a completely dry clay finish that you're used to. The mask still remains a little moist and therefore it doesn't suck all the life out of the skin. It just draws the impurities to the surface. And I must say that it really worked. I have tried a ton of masks like this, but this one really is non-drying but I was impressed by its detox power because I had a blemish which I thought was pretty much healed. And on one occasion when I used this the next day, that blemish that I thought was going away was a full blown whitehead, which means this product is great at causing your skin to purge anything that might be lurking <laughs> beneath the surface. So that may not happen for everyone, but I was quite impressed and in a day or two, that blemish was actually really healed. Unlike some clay masks of this nature, this one is designed to leave the skin soft and supple. And I must say from personal experience that it does do that and it's enjoyable to use. It's recommended using it about twice a week and leaving it on about 10 minutes. There may be a temptation not to follow directions, but more and more and more, I really appreciate following the directions of the brand rather than just going rogue on your own at first, which because I know so much and have dabbled so much in skincare, sometimes I tend to create my own rules, but I've been learning to behave recently and it's really been paying off. It turns out all the science and investment the brands put in, they actually do kind of know what they're talking about when it comes to their own products. So in this, you have the Kaolin that absorbs the oil and I really found draws impurities to the surface. And then you have the rosemary that reduces the appearance of pores and the honey, chamomile, and jasmine, which are said to be soothing and nourishing. This is my only Shantikai skincare product at the moment, but I am interested in trying more in the future. Next, we'll talk about their complexion products. The first one up is the Future Skin Oil-Free Gel Foundation, and I have the shade Banana. As you can see, that foundation is a whipped, luscious looking gel cream formula and it feels delicious going on the skin. But of course, we need a foundation to do more than just feel good. Now they do have botanicals in the foundation and so it is said to be both nourishing and provide a medium to full buildable coverage. The coverage is one thing that really surprised me. Sometimes with the natural leaning brands or the botanical leaning brands, and sometimes even with the luxury brand, the coverage is not always 
there. But this gives a lovely solid medium to high medium coverage and gives you a nice smooth even complexion. I was very impressed by that and I am wearing it now. The spreadability is really nice. A little goes a long way. You don't have to use a ton of product. So this jar might last you longer than you think. I'll have to get back to you as I continue to wear it, but I've worn it a couple of times. It lays nice on the skin. It doesn't have a lot of transfer, which is surprising because sometimes the more cream-like textures, they might shift and move or transfer a lot. But once this is set in place, it does a nice job about staying in place. It says it gives a dewy finish. I found it to be more of that soft matte, sort of satin skin-like finish. I found that this foundation likes to be applied with a certain style of brush or fingers. This is my MAC 159 brush. I love it. I love it because it's a paddle style brush and it's not so densely packed. So it really applies the product without sucking up a lot of your product, but it's not so flimsy that it leaves streaks. So this is a really nice one I've been loving. And then the Hakuhodo 5557 foundation brush. This Hakuhodo brush is really nice with a variety of product and it's not too aggressive with a gel cream like this one because this cream is not thick. It's an airy whipped gel texture. So while I do like the other more denser style foundation brushes that apply more like a beauty blender, I prefer these brushes more with this style of foundation. And then if you want to come back in and give the finish like one final smoothing out, then you can lightly come in with a beauty blender as your very last step. And the next complexion product I have is the Real Skin Eye and Face Stick. This shade is 4W and it's a couple of shades lighter than I am. I tend to be NC44 or NC45. And so it gives me a lifting and brightening effect. And that's what the shade looks like. They impressed me yet again, like they did with the foundation. They have impressed me with this stick as well. This stick can be used for foundation if you're fortunate enough to have your shade in this stick. This stick can be used as foundation or concealer. This stick surprised me. It has a nice, opaque, perfecting coverage, almost full coverage, and I was very surprised. It also sits beautifully. If it reminded me of anything, it would be similar to the Clay de Pole stick concealer, but this one is not quite as emollient as the Clay de Pole. It has a slightly more matte texture to the touch and feel. So it's smooth and even, and it's less prone to settling. Okay, so staying in the gel cream liquid family, but moving on to their color cosmetics. This is the Chantecaille Cheek Gelée Hydrating Gel Cream Blush in the shade Lively. This is said to be a hydrating gel cream blush that is sheer but is still supposed to have a vibrant color and be long lasting. This coral shade itself is absolutely beautiful and right up my alley. I love shades like that. This one is a bit sheer for my taste. I don't quite get the color payoff that I desire. I don't think it's necessarily complexion with this one. I think that the formula in general is just a bit sheer. So I'm not sure even how good the payoff would be on fairer skins, at least to the taste that I like. If you find that you like this color and the color payoff, I would recommend applying this right after your foundation, but before you set with powder. Because I also found in my experiments with this that this does tend to move the product beneath it. Now this is their Liquid Lumiere. And this is their anti-aging face illuminator in the shade Brilliance, and it is Brilliant. This is said to be a sheer highlighting fluid that provides light reflecting radiance. This is beautifully formulated and I would definitely use this on myself or within my work. It's an elegant formula that goes on like a second skin, gives a beautiful luminescent sheen and I like that it sets in place but it doesn't turn sketchy 
or powdery. It blends beautifully and still continues to look satiny even though it is firmly in place. I really like these and this can be worn as a highlighter but this is also pretty mixed into your skincare or your foundation as well. Continuing with color products and literally uh, holding that highlighter in to keep it from falling out this is the Radiant Chic cheek and highlight duo in the shade coral despite the highlighter being on the loose it is a pretty formula these are that baked jelly texture that is so silky beautiful and radiant on the skin it does pick up and apply best with a firmer brush will have your natural hair bristles i was curious what the payoff might be with these but they're very pretty and i'm wearing them today that coral's right up my alley i love coral on so many complexions and so i just think that's very pretty and and then the highlight is very elegant. It's a soft golden peach. These are Chantecaille's Real Bronze Bronzers. This shade is Goa and this shade is Serena. It's a little challenging to see the difference in the shades, but I'll try to swatch them. But the difference in them is much more evident on the fingertips. So the deeper shade is Goa and that's a richer warm brown and then Serena is a more golden bronze. These are a finely milled gel powder formula. These are standout products in the color cosmetic products that I've tried from Chantecaille. The formula again is very elegant. Lays on the skin like a second skin. It's so beautiful. <laughs> you know many of us love the Charlotte Tilbury formula. This Dare I say it's even more elegant than that one, certainly as beautiful as that one. Nice way to finish the video is with Chantecaille's finishing powder. This is the perfect blur finishing powder. This was extremely popular and from my understanding it sold out but they're bringing it back. It's designed to be lightweight and give you a blurred perfecting finish and I must say that it does exactly that. Charlotte Tilbury for some reason comes to mind yet again because you know I love her airbrush flawless filter powder. This reminds me of the perfecting powers of that one however it truly is translucent for the most part doesn't add much color at all it adds that perfect blurring effect but it is super lightweight almost undetectable feels like you're putting nothing on the skin whereas charlotte definitely has a more velvety it's soft and beautiful but it has a more velvety texture i would say charlotte's has more of a setting ability as well whereas this is truly a finishing powder that you can use as a very last step that will not disturb the makeup underneath and if you want to learn more about face powders be sure to watch my video right before this one which is all about face powders i feature 30 face powders thank you so much for those of you who appreciated the hard work and effort that went into that video and really supported it by watching it and commenting and giving it a thumbs up i really appreciate it so those are the highlights of the products that i've been trying out by shantakai i really look forward to trying more from the brand in both their skincare and their color cosmetics i see that they have released a cushion foundation which is very interesting so perhaps i'll have the opportunity to try that. I thank you all so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you in the very next video, but until next time, keep it pretty. Mm -hmm.